lectures or talkers with you and maybe you have a takeaway from here. So I assume no prior knowledge and there's an asterisk there because obviously you need to know at least something to start off with. I would assume that you are using the next space systems, preferably Linux because Docker is specifically made to work with Linux. And the idea, uh, well this talk, the idea for this talk came that it already had been given, I already had given three talks prior to this. Now what I did for this talk is, I amalgamated all the three talks, the earlier three talks into one talk. So I squeezed a lot of stuff in this and the basic idea was to have a four part. But the content that would be covered in that would be too much and most of you are not into programming and in Go, Lang or some other languages with which Docker is built upon. So I thought that let's do the first three part now and sometimes if we get time we'll do the third, the fourth one. So yeah, now the idea is that we'll first of all get on the same page, we'll first of all understand how does the Linux system work the way it does, what are the things it requires, what is the user space, what is the kernel and what were the problems that Docker was invented slash discovered, I don't know, to tackle. And uh, we will basically go, we'll run through them, we'll not talk in depth about virtualization technologies, we'll try to talk a little bit about Jiru, we'll try to talk a little bit about the virtualization technologies, for example, the quick emulator, the QMU, and yeah, we might also look at virtual environment. Now, once we set the pace, then we'll talk about containers in real. What the hell do we mean by a password container and all these things. And intermediates. Now, obviously this looks like a mouthful, but Trust me, I'm a student, so I know, this happens to me also. You go to a class, the teacher gives you 10 things, it's bound to happen that you're not going to remember all the 10 things, so you'll remember 7 things, so what we do? We'll make it a marathon run. We'll cover 33.33, you do the math, so if you do the 30% math here, you boil down to 10 things, but that's what we want. So, let's start with the foundation this time. We will, this will be a very kind of a heavy, hands-on, yeah. this will be a, like, a very heavy hands-on session, so what we are trying to do is, if you are able to follow along, it would be fine. Now, I don't assume that you have Docker already installed, but if you have, that's well and good. We won't be using it right now. Close this. Is this visible? No. Yeah. Now is this visible? Get it a little down. Let me do a quick LS. So, the typical structure of a Unix system is that you have certain very important folders which need to be present there in order for a system to be called a Unix system. Unix is a standard, you have to qualify certain checklists so that you can be called a Unix system now. I will not go into the depths of it, but the bin folder is very important. It contains your binaries. The dev folder is also very important because it contains all the devices and the lib folder contains your libraries. The rest of all, let's just talk about one more and let me talk about the etsy directory. The etsy directory, what it contains is, it contains all the, this is your basically the control panel, typically. All the configuration stuff goes in the etsy directory. And obviously your my documents sort of analog, my, my computer is this home directory, it contains the stuff that everybody requires. Now if we jump back to our slides and see. So the idea here is what happens when we type a command inside the Unix shell environment, what really goes behind it. Now I type ls, now what really happened is, oh, it is executed. But ideally what happened is, there is a specific variable, a special variable called as a path variable. So it's a very weird looking crazy variable, so let's, let's just very quickly see this. Home, NFR, W, bin, blah, 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 blah. So, the delimiter here is this folder. What happens here is, whatever you type here, for example, I type ls here, it will prevent all these things in the order of their appearance here. So, ls, now when I type enter, the machine automatically prevents these three things to it and executes. Is that fine? Okay. 
So let me try to write something insane which should not be there. So obviously this is not supposed to be there unless I'm crazy. Yeah, so what Zichel says, I did not find it. Why he did not find it? Because he searched for it. How did he search for it? He prevented all these things. This is point number one. But so ideally, if you are on Unix and you are akin to using Unix, what usually happens is, for example, let me just quickly whip up a small, uh, let me write a new program. It's not necessary what I did there. Let me just build it. Uh, I have a binary here. Now I need to execute it. Anybody, could one of you tell me how do I execute this binary? Now I have a hello here. How do I do? How do I run it? Now, why do I do that? Well, the idea here is anything on Unix will not execute bare bones. Everything if it has to execute, requires a full pass. Now, obviously you would say that I type ls. Well, the shell does the most of the work for us. So, dot means till now, you append a slash, that means whatever is till now, and do hello. Well, I could very well do a pwd. Uh, paste it here, write hello, and yeah, it's up. But there is one more very important thing that happens with programs is that if I write a hello, now I got an a dot out. I run this a dot out. Everybody is happy. Hello world is not printed on the screen, but. Let me show you something which might most of you. So the problem here is I did an LDD. LDD tells me what all things does this file depend on. Now, these are libraries now. You cannot write, you cannot always keep on writing everything from scratch. So what you do is you have libraries installed on your machine at given places. Now it says that libc, the C standard library is placed at user lib libc blah 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 and all those things I don't really care about those and ld is the loader, the linker basically, the linking editor and bdso is if you were really you know, care about bdso it's syscall emulation and stuff if any of you want to talk about I might have little pointers on that if you are it's basically something related to security okay so Usually, when I ship this hello binary to somebody among you, you try to run it and most of the time it's going to run without any issue. But let's just assume that my GMC was a very recent one and yours was a very earlier one. There are chances that this program is not going to run. There's a problem called as works on my machine. What usually happens is you do an assignment, it runs on your machine perfect, you submit the code, doesn't run on your team. Why? Because the data does not have the same setup as you have. So these were some of the problems that we started off to solve. And the you know the path to that started off in 1960s now. We'll talk about it. So yeah, we eventually do something like this. This is called the REPL. The repeat, I don't know what exactly REPL means, but this is called REPL. So the next system has two parts. It has a kernel and it has some user space binaries. Usually the library and the binaries that are there are supposed to be the user space program. And the kernel is supposed to be the engine. Now the analogy here is, if you have a car, the most important part of the car is an engine. But if you just have an engine, you cannot do anything with it. And if you just have a car without an engine, you still cannot do anything. You just need both of these things. One of these things, it's not going to work. Now, obviously there is a star here, exist. I put a star here. Some embedded devices may let you work without an operating system. The kernel. But usually the case in point here is that you need to have both of them. But they are swappable. What do I mean by that is you install, you get a car, you get a car chassis, and you get an engine. You install it. Now, you don't like the engine. Put it out, get a new one. Do all the fittings and all to get things same. And what makes your computer stateful? Now, this is a very important question that I should ask at this moment. What if, let's ask a hypothetical question, what if I take out my hard drive right now, 
this thing, shut it down. Hard drive right now, go to any of your machines, take your hard drive and put in mine and boot the machine. What do you think will happen? Will it boot? At least try to be interactive. Will it boot? Yeah, it should boot. How does the hard drive know that I was gotten out somewhere? In? So, what happens? That computer now becomes mine because all the settings are there. So the thing that makes your computer stateful, hardware is usually stateless. Just sans the hardware that stores things, hardware is usually stateless. So what happened here is, what you did, got the hard drive out, you shipped it. Now it's not a very easy thing to carry my hard drive all along. But if I want, I can. These are some things that we will touch upon. So this is what we talk about. This is the normal system. You have some devices beneath the devices on that side, some of them are stateful and some of them are not stateful. But let's not worry about those. We have the kernel which we could swap. If you have Linux kernel v3.1, we could swap out with 4.1. I don't care, whatever. And the user space tools. The user space tools are similar. You could swap them to whatever you want. But, have anybody heard of VMware and all those things that you do? You know, you get? Exactly. So what you do in that scenario is you fake a lot of things. We know hardware, CPU is supposed to take, let's say, digital logic 101, an adder takes two inputs, gives you two outputs. Two, operator A, operator B, the sum and the carry method. So, the adder is supposed to take an input, give an output. Well, insanely close to it is a C program or any other program in any other language. I could very well always write a program that emulates the same behavior. But obviously, hardware is going to run at, let's say, drift velocity speeds, very fast speeds. And software is going to run very slow. But I can do exactly the thing that a CPU does via software. Obviously, it's going to be very slow. And just for an example, FPGAs are a device which in themselves are nothing, but you program them to act as anything. You can program an FPGA to be whatever you want. Program it, make some connections, stuff this So, and this was the earlier was the hypervisor architecture. What you did in this architecture is you had the Linux kernel and you had uh, your own user space and you basically emulated all these fake CPUs and fake memories and fake devices. And now, what you did on top of it, you installed a real kernel because the kernel doesn't care about it. If it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it is a duck. Doesn't matter if it is really a duck or not. So what happens there is you run a real kernel over it and over on top of that you run some same programs that you have to ship. The idea here is that the environment you give here can be shipped to anybody. If you have a big enough hard drive, you copy this virtual machine, give it to your friend, tell him to execute it. Well, he'll Again, do the same thing, he'll fake the CPUs, the memory and the devices and the same environment rises up there again. So, the problem of works on my machine solved in one way. The next way is, why don't I do away with all these things now? Faking the CPU and memory and Linux kernel and all these things, why don't I make a new hardware right now? Okay, let's try to understand this nicely, what I mean by that. What I am saying here is that I have a hard drive that contains all my stuff. My machine is running. I ask my machine to stop for a minute. I take out that hard drive. I get a new hard drive. Punch it in. What's going to happen? The machine is already running. Well, I assume that nothing bad is going to happen. Pot swapping just works out of the box. So I'll get a blank slate. I can do whatever I want there. I have the kernel and I can install some user space tools over it. Well, if I have 10 hard drives, I can have 10 computers. And all of them will be running the same kernel. The problem here is the kernel, loading the kernel inside the operating system and booting all these things up takes a lot of time. Now, if you have used VMware, you or VirtualBox or whatever, we are not going to use any of those, by the way. We'll do a demo in different ways. If you have used those things earlier, what happens with those things is it takes a lot of time to boot. Something around two minutes to boot. And this is what Docker does, and this is what we try to learn. Now, what we say, this user space guy here is, this is a container, not really a container because I'm talking very generic here, it could, it could be a chibu, it could be something else, but that's what we are talking about. So, 
let's start with the first thing. Two, it started in 1969. Uh, is it? Yeah, it was it. It started in 1969. I'm sorry, 79 should not be there. Uh, 1969, Bill Joy got a divine intervention. I don't know whether he was high or not. He got something called a shoe. Nobody knows why he died. Write this. Kirk Makusik, who is the author of BSD, writes in one of his memoirs that maybe he was trying to compile something over some other thing. That's why he wrote it. But that guy was a genius. He is, by the way, the author of PI. Well, if you know, it's text and So what we do is we try to work in some similar scenario. Uh, we already saw these guys. Now we said, oh, I don't know. Okay. We saw that a Linux system is typically denoted by this bin and all these things. So why don't we try and create our own inside our own box? Let's try and play with it. Uh, do I have it? I think I should. Have it. By the way, the code is available on GitHub. I will get it. So here I have busy box that we jump inside busy box real quick and do it with this. I've already compiled it, so I don't want to waste your time. And this also looks like Bing, Linux RC, and SBIN and all those things. This also looks like similar to what I had. So let me quickly ask sudo, you have to be in mode for this. Ask chu to busy groups. Now, what does this do? Uh, what is my current route right now? Well, is everybody with me or am I coming too fast, too slow? Samaja? That's fine. Let me do a PWD and uh, my current route is home and I'm way into this hierarchy. Now let me change my route and see what happens. Sudo, oh yeah, I should have a wide Sudo, chiru, and let me write busy box. Busy box I already know. Now, what will this do is for this process, for whatever is running here, it will change the route. Now, changing the route means everything will get changed. Now, see what happens. After this, I'll have to write a command. Bin sh. Now, what I did is let's try and dissect this. I changed the root to busybox. Now, busybox gets wiped out. It is replaced by root. Now, busybox is the starting point. And I run inside that busybox slash search for slash bin and slash sh. It's first of all, real quickly, ls busybox and bin. And see, there are a bunch of things, and there should be sh somewhere. Yeah, the last one. So, we go up into this and let's run it. Ah, uh, he is not happy. The problem here is when I just wrote ls. Now, see, if I write bin ls, now he is happy. So, what I will do is I will quickly export my path variable to slash click. I do a PWD and it says I am, well, I'm not really at root, but what does the application look like? The application sees it, it's root. So I can create a whole other lot of system here. I can create a new system here. A full fledged system with all the usernames, for example, who and I. Who am I is not from? Add user. I don't know, Busybox doesn't have these things, but okay, we'll come to it. We'll do some other things where we do these things. Where we add a real user inside. Now, this is usually called as a truth jail because when you run an application, you don't want the application to see something else. Now, whatever you do, you cannot go back to the real home. I cannot really see. Now, this can never see the rest of the system. It is not isolated, by the way, but it can really not see something else because it's 1969 still. So, it cannot really see something else, but really, it looks a good solution. Okay. It's a security risk because you can break out of the true jail and maybe there's no real isolation. So yeah, this is a very famous tweet that went around the circle. So I also kind of thought that let's put it here. Uh, ideally, what we call the box that runs inside, we call it a sandbox. Now I googled around for sandbox and some weird stuff came around. So I don't know why people came up with the idea of sandbox, but yeah, that's about it. So now we did true. This is 1969. Let's come back to something around mid 2000. VMware got up with a very insane idea. Let's fake things and create a fake CPU and run over it some software. So, what did they do? And I have a 
bunch of OSS here and let's just play with what should it be? Okay. Chemo system x86 now. You don't really need to remember all this, but I'm just showing you what I'm asking is system. Now I wrote chemo slash system. There is other things I could write there. I wrote chemo, well usually people pronounce it Q P M U, but I don't know how it's been. I wanted to boot, what do I want it to do? I wanted to boot it from CD now. What is the CD now? Google. Okay, but to what? 40, let's see. 60, okay. I wanted to boot Google to. And what else does the system have? The system has many. Okay, let's say 2048 megabytes. That's many. What else do you think the system has? It has four CPUs. And let me just put a magic flag so that it works. What does SMP mean? SMP means symmetric multi processing, which means nutshell, it means cores, CPUs, and four CPUs. And voila, I'm running Ubuntu without using VMware and all the that because those guys don't really utilize the full. Now, all these things I'm doing is specific to Linux. I unfortunately am very much interested in operating systems and compilers so I tend to do a lot so I don't like those VMware guys not the virtual box guys but KVM is supposed to be something inside the Linux kernel built inside it which you can use to do something which is much more powerful and much more faster than what you really see and you have a box here now there's a flag that I used enable KVM I'll briefly talk, touch upon it so yeah I have a box running and I can do whatever I want here. I can even attach a hard drive, network device and all those things you could imagine. I told you fake it, you can fake everything. The problem here is that this is really a sausage factory. If you know what a sausage factory is, if you are non-vegetarian, a sausage factory is, if you really enter inside the sausage factory, you turn out to be a vegetarian. Because the amount, you know, you know some, sometimes a person gets missing, he's just gone inside that sausage, his sausage, but yeah, thumbs are lost. So, yes, yes, I think it gives you the insights also. 13.6 MPs. Now, we do a little mathematics if we are good at mathematics, which I'm not, unfortunately. You know, Docker, PS minus S. We already remember that the Docker instance was 13 per some MP. The extra diff stored was 5.8 If we add them up, we get something around 19.5. So this is the total amount of space you are using while running or inside a container. And the best thing about this is, it's not necessary this runs only motion. Run into a lab motion. Who cares? I'm not encouraging that. Please don't do that. But yeah, if you have to do that stuff and you don't want to get caught, run it over some place which is not yours. And then connect them. Okay. So we did. Uh, let, let's stop this and because this is bad. Docker PS. Docker stop 2010. Is he done? Let me see. Did I cheat you guys? So now I stop the Tor container and I will go to. Google.com, whatever, obviously the processor is not there, so we don't need to do it there. Board, guys? Board, any? Is it too much? Then we will try to curb it down because I have some more things. Unfortunately, I had more things in plan because I don't want to do parts. He can? Fine? Anybody wants a break? No, that's okay. So let's go in on this. Now we did. What happened? It did something. Now, how do I create a Docker image? Now, obviously, one of the friends asked me. I download Ubuntu. I do something to it. And then I exit out of it. It just goes downstairs. And I have to remove it. So I don't like that. I don't want to restart the container. I want an image out of it. OK. So how do I do it? Let's do something. Let us basically do Docker run. It okay. Run it what? Open. Okay. I don't know how to spell Ubuntu. So let me run Ubuntu. Alpine is single. SH. The first command inside Alpine to run is SH. I by the way skipped a lot of things. 
let me be very frank with you. If you say the Maharaja, some doctor, what I mean, skip deliberately a lot of things. The, the most important of those is that there is just one process that's running inside your brain. You can have multiple, but there is just one process that's running inside your brain. That's a reason for it, security and all those things. But I, that's if you want to know, you can play the part. So F2P, P, APK, APK, I think it's my own guy, as far as I remember, APK update. Okay, APK, APK update. Add, add some words. Python. Yeah, I have to get who to pass the question. Yeah. What happens is you have black mayo brew. What is brew? Back in the APK, Alpine guys don't like pseudo apps get big. That's what works for them. Yeah, so I did something, blah 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 blah. Kuch kiya mene. Now, I want to do, I want to kill the container. Exit. I do a docker ps minus a. Let me see where is the about a minute ago. Yeah, this is the Alpine container that I had. What I do, I installed Python inside the container. I didn't know anything else, I just installed Python inside the container. Now, I just want to name this container which has this setting done. Python installed, some other things done. Ah, let me just restart and do something else. Docker restart 7a. Docker attach. Yeah, I'm inside here. Do I have VI? Uh, I have. So let's go inside the home. And inside the home, let me create a small file abc.txt. This is going to be my I exit out of this container and I fortunately exited out of a lot of containers. I don't know what I do. So I do a docker ps, doesn't show me anything. Docker ps minus a, it should show me 7a is still accepted. Now, I had some configuration unbeknownst to me. What did I do in the configuration? The configuration was only adding an ABC, but I could have very well done a lot of other things, configured a web app maybe compiling some things. Now, what I want to do is I want to save it and name it something. So I do it. So I do a docker commit. Now, you have to tag it. Minus T, tag it. I'll give it name, mfrw, alpine conf. C-O-N, alpine conf. And now, after that, you give it the container name, 7 8 Nobody starts from 7, so I can even write 7. Okay. I yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know, I know. Okay. Still doesn't end. Maybe it's not this. I do docker images. I have a new container, Alpine Con. What does it contain? All the settings that I did, it contains those things. Now, if I try to provision this container, docker run it mfrw alpine conf and the command sh. Okay, I'm inside here. I went inside home and did an abc.txt. Now, I can, if I push this over Docker Hub, anybody of you downloads it will have the same configuration that I did. Obviously, I just throw one file here. I could have written hundreds of files 
which you would not sometimes understand or maybe we are not qualified to understand these things. Some things in security are way above our head. So let the pro people do it, ship the container to us. Now it's in a state that is supposedly what they think is the best. We don't have to fiddle around, go around, copy paste commands and all those things. So now it's the way it's supposed to be. Thank you. Now, okay. Now it's a little QA and I thought of it. So how to create a Docker image? We just saw you could come in. But there should be no more way. So it's simple, you use something called as a make file. You use a make file to create a <coughs> Docker image. Now we already know the difference between a Docker image and a container. So use a make file. So what the hell is a make file? Docker file. Have you heard of make file? Anybody heard of make file? Anybody not heard of make file? You are make files are, are a way of compiling software using some other tricks. It's a recipe sort of thing. So what you do is you give it a recipe, you give the Docker with a recipe. Well, let's try and see. We made a tor container. We made a tor image. This is how you make it. Whether I give you the tor now, we said that it's not very really logical to you know send huge containers around. It's not a good idea. A container is supposed to be 500 degrees. Full fledged container. So let's say TensorFlow is 4.5 gigabytes. So I cannot really download it. It's not a good idea. But my tower one was some 20 MB, so very little I could. But is this easy? I mean, how many lines are these? I can SMS you these. Once I SMS you these, you go to Docker, you ask Docker, do do this. Somehow. Docker, build, blah, 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 blah. It creates the same container that I have. You can use it the same way. I did, and this is not going to be any difference. And you can name it whatever you want. So, how do you build it? Docker build minus tag, tag it, mfrw tor slash latest. You can do it, you can do a little change to it and name it uh, version 2. Now, we'll build something. It will take a little time, but think about us here. Docker images. We have Docker tor here. So, let me just Docker. RM removed containers. Now let's just remove images. What should I do? Docker RM was taken, so then we just added one more Docker RM. Remove image. Let me get some of the hash. 857. 857. Okay. Okay. Obviously, some of my containers are running. But they are storing the diff, so I cannot remove the parent and you know, I'm on the same branch and cutting. Let me see docker ps, I'm not running docker ps minus k. I'll show you a different trick to remove all the containers. It's not, a really, it's not really a trick, but most of the people, you might see it on the internet. Docker ps minus aq. What docker ps minus aq is, it gives you only the first part of these things. Only the containers. Now, put it inside braces and put them. Dollar behind it executes the command first, then gives all the nicely to Docker RM so that it can go to the place. So let me go inside Docker files. I had Tor, now I have a Docker file. And let's very quickly run through this Docker file and see what happens. Now, what am I doing here is, let me break it down. Is it fine? Let me bump. Let me bump. Let me bump. Let me bump. So I am using the Alpine as my base image from Alpine. Download the Alpine image and over it label unrelated. You can just go and run. Run a command inside the container. First of all, update it and add tor to it and add a user whose name is unknown. Okay, fine. Then copy tor rc to slash etc slash tor rc. Blah blah blah. Some things. Let's see. Uh, the folder where you created this Docker file, Docker file is supposed to be capital D. And I have a file here called as Torrance. This contains the configuration for Tor to run same. The way I want it to run, that's why I put it there. So what I did is I asked it copy Tor RC from there inside the container when you make it inside there. Now it builds the container and finally builds the image. Then expose 9050 and this is not really expose the ports to make the system ports equal to this. This is just a hint to the programmer or somebody who is using the image 
that these guys are going to be exposed so you need to run a minus p and do the host and port map host and container port mapping okay then user this means now change the user when you run this command change the user change the user to anon and run this right and build um, now comes the thing that you already that you had said uh, it is of your mind so it should be human happens minus p and a part of you dot 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 means in this folder whatever is here try to do it it's easy so I this but yeah what he did is now, these container people took things to some other level of insanity. A container ni banana. Har ek cheez ke liye container. Yeah, so, pehla container pehli command ke liye. Ek hai. The first thing, it's the first layer. Pehla command tha, uske liye pehli layer. The second thing, uske liye dusri layer. Aur maine union kar diya. Now, we know inside a set, if I have two sets, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I union these two things. What is going to happen? end up with unique elements and the things which repeated will just get discarded the same thing happens here you create a container you what you do is oh, you create a container then a next container is stacked on top of it the things that are not <coughs> the things that are same the top container is reflected the things that are same the top ones are reflected and the things that are different emerge out you understand this and the way these things it's not necessary for you to use docker but it's the way things works that's why when you do an update update you basically don't let it cache you don't let it cache you do tricks otherwise what happens is it's a very nice question and a very tricky one. I don't know whether you understood the question or not, but I'll answer him at least. So the question was that I cache everything. So I run sudo apt-get update 10 years ago. Sudo apt-get update is going to remain the same. So he cached the result of that, created a container. And then I run a different command. What will happen? Bad things. When I again run the Docker file, it will not do sudo get up apt-get update because he thinks that it's already been done. So he need to club together certain commands so that they always run. At the moment you're building. Maybe this might seem lazy. Just think of those 33 things that you can do. Achha, thik hai. Achha. Uh, thik hai, da, 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 da. So, uh, this is it. There are some things after this also, but this is pretty much. You can stay and we'll do really fun things. Okay. If anybody wants to leave, wait, okay, I'll put you there. Docker, I'll pop you. After those few, I'll put you there. Okay. I'll put you there. So, remember the bills I do? That VI guy, that, you know, that high guy, that four. True. Nobody knows why? Yeah, it's right. Huh? Uh, I didn't get it. Uh, it was that the fun part begins now, you can leave. So I thought people were going to leave. Then I have this. For those who chose to stay, there is no fun part. <laughs> so you laugh. That was the, the aim of the meme was to make you laugh. Okay, so let's rock that, you know, that bridge I do, I do. So let's now write a docker file. You see something here from scratch, that means I need an empty container. I don't need anything inside. I don't need Google to help. I need nothing inside. Okay, I'll make it myself. Let us go inside docker file AC box. Okay. Guys, if you are bored, I can make it much more interesting. Please, you just have to say something and then you should start off and do crazy stuff. Okay, so from scratch, maintainer, 
push PR. Okay. What I want to do is BB build bin. It is the same busy box folder. BB is the busy box folder slash build. Uska bin uta ke container ke slash bin mein Okay. Build ka S bin container ke S bin mein download. Blah blah blah. Chal. Chal. Uske baad finally I write this CMD. This is now when a container runs after the new the image you give a command to run. So that it goes inside the container. This is chroot mein diya tha. The same thing as chroot. Remember how did chroot work? You change the root some place and then give it a little command. Which it ran. Now, if you don't give that command, by default it will run this message. This is the idea behind this. Now, let's try it. Wait a minute. So, I do a Docker images. I don't have. So, I think I should have busy books. Yeah, here I am. Docker run. I think we should be conversant with it. Docker run it. Docker run it. And a part of. I don't know. DC. So I think I'm And voila, I'm inside the busy box. The earlier churu thingy, now inside doc. How did you do it? This time it has a real IP address, its own IP address, totally isolated. If I add a little bit of seccom stuff, it might not be able to do. You can even play with this. What you could do is you could add that seccom down. I'll give you certain resources, certain docs, maybe after this. But you go through them and you might play with SecOp and learn a lot. Because this let me learn a lot about it as a whole. How do softwares get installed? How do people make binaries, libraries, and what are the design decisions behind the APIs? Why do people do things the way it's done? It seems very weird or arbitrary, but it's not. There's a lot of thought behind it. Okay. How do you run it? Basically, you build it and any geo defense. Uh, I'm not going to take it. Famous and uh, What I want to do is, I want to write a small file server in Go. Why do I choose Go? Unfortunately, it's very easy to make static libraries, which do not depend on any other language. I say, if you have a C, you will have Most likely, one week. After one week, even if I'm able to write something, it won't be static because the bindings that I'm going to use are key. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use Go, write a small file server. File server will come from. I will serve file, a small web server, let's just say. And after writing a web server, I'll make a container out of it. So I containerize it. After containerizing it, I'll go to a folder where I have downloaded God 7 blah blah blah. Jo bhi hai. I'll write a small web page and do other things and then use that container to host that. Sounds Complex but isn't really much. Okay, now I have done a lot of cheating here. I have already written the files. So I don't want you to see me typing stuff, blah blah blah, but this is pretty much it. Go, let's go, amazing stuff. So I have written a small file server. I have, and if somebody of you wants to compile it yourself because the code is going to be available on GitHub, so this is how you do it. Let me add that. Exactly. basically put it up. So let us basically see LDD of file server. It says I'm not a dynamically compiled, I'm not a dynamically linked library. What would happen if I had done it the normal way? Go build file server dot go and the output should be not okay. I don't know how to get it.
多嘅精髓喺度，所以不一樣。Thank you。LED for file server, which I compile the normal way, it depends on these libraries. So, if I put it inside the container, the container needs to have these libraries also. I don't want it. What I want is, the only downside of this is the binary size is going to increase a little. So, let me show you how much is the binary size going to increase. In some moment, it will fall that. It tells me f underscore static is the same file, it's 6 megabytes. This is for file server and the file server is 6 point. There's no difference at all. I don't know. Uh, okay, I can explain this. Anybody wants to explain what, uh, understand what happened here? Yeah, bada ho gaya, static chota ho gaya, wo bada ho gaya. If you are interested, I'll tell you what happened. Exactly. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, it is not me. Uh, it's go build. You just write go build, it builds it. Oh, yeah, sure, 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 sure. sure. Why not? I you basically ask the Go compiler runtime to use its own internal things. It does not use the C bindings, use its own, which happen to be very good at this moment. It seems that they are very good because I don't know, this should not be the case. Right? This is strange to me. But okay, you learn all the time. So, Ideally, let me just remove file server because I don't want it. MBF um, file server. Okay, I have this. Let me go through the number. Uh, why don't we run file server first? File server will host a file. It tells me some 8080 report has been opened and what. already in this case, Nginx had it, but I refreshed it, it showed me that Docker blah 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 file server is doing its thing. Now, the best thing about web servers is that if they find in the directory they are hosting, if they find something called as index.htm or html, they will throw that. They are not going to show this, they are going to throw that. Right? I'll show you why do I like like to be I can. This is the reason why. I just have a file here. I go back here. I do a refresh and this thing shows the page. Right? This is the way you write small web static. open docker file but before opening docker file let's just run file server with a minus help and see what happens now it tells me i basically host a path which you give me if you don't give me any path i host the current directory fine i host on a port by default it's 0080 but if you give me a port i host on that fine so these are the things that i give it open the docker file quickly and I make it a little down and just try to understand from scratch what does that mean I need an empty state I don't need anything I need an empty container cool. label blah forget it copy file server to slash what does this mean copy file server to root there is nothing else in the root so copy it takes it inside root expose 8080 this does not mean expose it this is just a hint sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't Earlier it used to work with me, but yesterday while I was trying all these things, it didn't work. So that's why I'm saying something. And then you run the command file server because obviously you get the absolute path slash. No, no need to do dot slash because you are already in root slash file server. And path is equal to data. I don't have data. It's an empty container. I mean, it's crazy. I think. And 
code is equal to 80 rupees. Let me show you why did I do this. Now I know that he is hosting data. See how do I use it. I build it using the usual tools docker build minus t blah 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 blah. I don't care about it. Docker images. I have file server here. This is the same thing. This is 6.26 MB because really 6.26 MB and plus some baggage is what is required for a container. Just your app. Now what I want to do is I want to post current. Okay. What do I do? Let's go. Cheat a little. Now what I do is I do docker run minus d run detached. I don't care. Expose a code. My AD should be your AD basically. Okay, fine. And I want a volume mount. Mount the current directory to slash data, which was already not there. There was nothing there. So what you did is you mounted the current directory in data. Okay. And run this in the following file server. Let's try to see. Let's copy it quickly. Let's see. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Now, where do I need to go to check it? Now, since I said my port 80 is mapped on the port 8080 of that, I'll quickly go to LOCL. I understand this is so much, but okay, I don't want to do this. See, I posted this. Now, we'll try to fulfill our promise that we said we're going to host the thrones. Let's just go back to the shell. Docker PS, obviously Docker stop 6F. Docker PS minus A. You have people running, so B cleanup is the function that I know. Cleans up everybody. PS minus A. If you want those D cleanup, etc., please send me a mail, I'll tell you where to find them. Because I myself have not posted them. Passwords and all those things. That's a key. So let's go to the I'm going to go to the Download. So I have already written a small web page. A small web page, blah blah blah, go to see obviously my I don't know, should I do this? I run the same earlier command that I ran, docker run, blah blah blah, the current directory, post it over data and see what happens. So I get the I go here, I hit enter. Obviously, he shows me the same thing because he caches. He likes to cache. Control R. But port 80 to sleep a little, that's a really good thing there. I know, epic fail. Epic fail. Anybody knows how to refresh, control F5, control R? Huh? Uh, I don't know what to do. Control Shift 10. Yeah. Yes. See? Now, let's check if this runs. And the best thing is, if you know my IP, you can hit it and use it. And you can watch it. And Go is pretty performant web server, so he might be able to handle the whole thing. Like my machine will be able to handle the whole thing. The way Go is written in such a way that it will be easily able to handle it. So, what do we do? We wrote an application, compiled it, made some software, dockerized it. The best thing about this file server is I pushed it to Docker. I'm going to Docker pull, write your own index, blah blah blah, the things. Please don't lose it. This is totally not just a security. That's a key. What is next? Uh, now, Gen5. I don't want to show you that, but how do you do it? Gen5 is a to nice Basically, it takes a lot of time. So, I already have a Docker image for it. You go to that download the docker image, run it, it's going to run as if you. Everything was put the way it was supposed to. Otherwise, you go into that dependency hell and all those things, and that thing's not 
So this is the Docker file for it. All the files are going to be shared with you, but should I walk through this file? Oh, let's quickly walk through this file. Ubuntu latest, I want Ubuntu latest, so get me a container that contains Ubuntu latest. Then run app get update. Okay, fine. Then add a user, blah blah blah, these, 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 these things. Work directory, guys, I understand. I really am appreciating you guys to bear with me for this. User, change the user to gem5, blah blah blah, and eventually the entry point is bash. Whenever you don't specify a command, get inside bash and start running. And you specify work directories and all those things, a lot of things that can be played with. There are a lot of moving parts, you can tune and tweak all those things. Okay. No JS, I don't want to compile. Basically, I might work on the runtime part of Node.js, that V8 and all those things, but Node.js itself, I don't like too much. But sometimes I have to write some code on Node.js, so I have a container for it. These are officially supported by Docker. Just Docker run 8 node. Docker run 8. If he want, tells me that I want to get it from somewhere, then I'll stop. Uh, but he gets about the group thing. These were all some kind of layers that were stacked, which I did not have locally. It is not going to be made of this much layers only. A lot of layers, but some layers were already here whose hash already matched because I pulled Ubuntu, I pulled other things. You understand the bigger picture? So I just only get those things that are specific to Node.js. And is he done? I think he's done. Bye, yes, sir. Why is he not the uh, uh, console.log? Please you know, correct me if I'm doing anything wrong because I don't know this. Uh, I don't have no JS. Thank you. No JS uh, Golang, I, this is going to be basically different languages, different things, but the idea is the same. Okay. So now we come to the crazy part. Okay. Great I almost missed that. So this thing is I wanted. That's why I put it here. Let's say we talked about the containers have their own networking stack. So what if I want the container to have my networking stack? Whatever the ports of container are, I don't want to map them. Whatever the container does, do it as if I did it. You have the authority to do whatever on the system. Okay. So net minus minus net is equal to host means whatever happened inside the container happens as it happened on the real machine. Fine? Does it make sense? Okay. I don't know. It should be the same. It should be the same. There should be no IP. The same. The IP should be the same as you have. Whatever you whatever port you expose, it is as if your own host exposed that. Inside the container, you can't, inside. You can't, you can't, it's still isolated. It is isolated, yeah, exactly. It's isolated, but the IP, the networking part is fully shared. So sharing the whole post networking stack. Right? That means so, yeah, thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else? Is there a question? Please. Why do you want to copy? You just found it. Minus V. Home directory. Huh? It's not copy. Everything will be inside. You just have to do etc also. Etc ko bhi utha do maa pe. Understand me? Mount etc over there, mount your home over there. From Ubuntu to Alpine to whatever, you can do it. And from whatever Python version you want there, to whatever Go version, Google version, blah version, exit out the container and you're back on the page. And let's, how about, no, let's see. How about Google Chrome? Okay, okay. Now we do Google Chrome. Obviously, we talked a lot of command line. Everything is just not like command line. Some people wanted to run sublime. So, what about those people? Should we not think about those people? So, this is not a fact for Google Chrome. Now, this is insane. I admit this is insane, but let's try to pick up this. We want to walk through the file. This is just the installation step. If you don't have Google Chrome on Ubuntu, on a base Ubuntu machine, what would you do? Just write it down here. 
and I don't want to run Google Chrome as a root user because that's a security risk. Obviously, I can do seccomp and all those things, but let's just assume that I don't know about seccomp. So I add a user Chrome, group add Chrome, blah 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 blah, and eventually I run Google Chrome. But this is the command I believe which is used to run Google Chrome by a command like Google Chrome. And that's it. Docker files go messy very fast. It goes stuff goes south very soon. So how do you run it? This is insane. Now we know minus v shares your host guy with your container. Everything in Unix is a file. If you guys would please repeat this after me, I will feel everything in Unix is a file. So what happens here is you have a Unix domain socket, X11 web server, client server architecture. So the X11 temp directory has the X11 socket. Now this is a socket, unfortunately. This is a socket. Even if it's a file, it's a socket. Unix domain socket. So you mount it over to the temp directory because the X server expects it there. Guys, do you want to break? I'm almost done. So we finish it off and then we enjoy. And I want to export the display. Now minus E means environment. Heat, yeah, heat chill. Uh, it should have said it's a heat chill. And I want to run an part of the program. Well, let me just copy this. And this is not going to run anymore because I have to do some more things. Which is the case in point of coding? Why don't I go back to that? Please don't. Please don't. Ah, yes. Get in front. Why? The reason is I did everything right. This is what is going to be you. You do everything right. It's just more work. The reason is the container has a different IP. My machine is a different IP. My machine is 127. Container is 172, blah, blah, blah. So, I have to run something called as xhost plus. Now, see what happens. When I write xhost plus, and see what happens. Access control disabled. Clients can access from any host. This is a very bad thing. I should have written xhost and an IP address of the container, but I don't know what the IP address of the container is. So, at least the subnet mask or something, but I just put a plus there. Whoever from there, your Mac, runs X11 client could mess up here and start starting Windows. So let's try this again. Can't go by. Oh, yeah. Now he's going to complain because I just didn't want to make this big. He'll complain about certain things. Let me. Why? Because he's catching certain stuff. So, wait. Why? 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 So I'm running 59.0. This is my official, my base. This is not inside the container because this is already inside the container. Let's not forget it. This is the Chrome that I use, my own Chrome. <coughs> Let's go here. Let's go above. Ah, this is 60. So this is the new one. I just made it yesterday. It seems to have been updated. I mean, I don't know. Okay, so, but okay, fine. Let's try and go to YouTube and see what happens. Now, the best thing with this is you can tell it, I want to give you this much of energy, this, 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 and all. Okay, let's try to do something same. How about this? Oh no, there is no sound. Oh no, yeah. yeah. Sound. So let's close this. These are a bunch of weird warnings which you should not care about. So we'll add sound to it. Host, pulse audio system, works on a system. The same thing where I will host it native inside Chrome, give the environment variables all right and see what happens. Now this is the most weird one. It took me something around three months plus. I would say six, but that would be an exaggeration because I did not search enough. This does not look much. It's 
Because apparently, always whenever I did this, some or the other thing I used to misplace and this thing did not misplace. Obviously, you should say this. I don't want to go to uh, Let's go to Google again. I YouTube TV. This is Chrome inside a container with, with some. What else do you want? Uh, for example, yeah, there is one use case. I did not put it here but deliberate because I want you also to fiddle around with something. Let's say you have NVIDIA. Anybody installed those CUDA guys on that Google to how painful that is? Uh, well, uh, once you do, you will experience the same pain as that pain. It is not a very good experience. So what you could do is uninstall it. It gives you access to the kernel. You don't mess your laptop. And is there a penalty you pay for it? Basically. And NVIDIA guys were sane enough to make something called as NVIDIA Docker. That's a thin client that sits over the core Docker and does all those things. This much about it. Do people use it? And in our college, most of the PhD guys who do machine learning stuff use Docker. Uh, it is not on our HPC cluster because that runs an ancient dinosaur. Do not some kernel, I don't know. The world is up to 4.30. Uh, we are on 4.30 and I don't know. Let's see which or be here because now yes are about that. So again, if something messes up, I'm sorry. Latex compilation, I think I showed you this. Uh, Docker compose. Now, uh, now the power of Docker comes with something that you have everything already compiled. Let's go. This is maybe the final thing. I'm not very sure because I'm not sure what happened. Docker PS, ah, it's not on those things. That one's Share Anybody knows about Share Critics? Huh? Okay. So, let me first show you a small demo. What the hell is Share Critics means? Okay, let's have a small website. Okay, so to deal with this, do you need to know more deal with this? Map users should know more deal with this. No? Probably. Sometimes in life you need to know. So, you write something in some weird cryptic language, it gets converted to code. Okay. And you use this, and this is a small program that does amazing shit. Uh, and uh, ShareNetic is a website that supports a lot of things. Review, share, history, chat, and all those things. And they also go through the same idea of the microservice idea. The database is different, and they have different service basically. The compilation part is handled by somebody else, and the front end part by somebody else, and all above it, a lot of things that govern Node.js. This whole whole website runs over Node.js. I don't know anything. Right. Frankly, let's go to the GitHub website. To GitHub. No, I don't know. So. What you want is you want to download most of these things because they have their own repos and connect them together over a machine and this will bring up the shared data website. The code is open source. Okay. Well, for a seasoned person, this should take something around two days. For a non-seasoned person like me, it should take something around a week. But we don't have that much of time. Let's try and see what people do. So why don't we kind of request those people to write a docker file for every container the way it's supposed to be. Which configuration to hoga? 
Ford is not going to run straight ahead with this. You have to make it run somehow. Now, I don't know how to run Node.js, just for an example. But I know how to type in a command. So I can do that. So I go there, I download all the containers, and then I just don't stop there. I basically, over Docker, I just add one more program. Now, I know Docker runs. Docker runs cool. Everybody runs fine. Now, I add a program called as Compose. Now, that adds a little bit of orchestration. Orchestration mean you run different containers, a bunch of containers over a Docker Swarm. You have a DC, you have 10 computers, 10 machines. You don't want to run all the 10 containers here. You want to run 5 here, 3 here, 4 here, 2. And the most important thing, if somebody dies, you won't have a mechanism that some other container spins up somewhere else. So that you always have fault tolerance. Load balance or some distributed. So you write a Docker compose file in which you say, I have services, which is a Mongo service. A database, I mean. Redis is a queue, sort of memcache, which is SIU, I think. By the way, Redis is cool. Redis is faster than, not faster than memcache, but Redis also can store data as a DB. Memcache doesn't store it. You have to install memcache DB for it, but Redis does it nicely. Okay. And a little bit of environment variables so that different containers talk to each other and okay. Now what you do is you just do docker compose up. I want this service up. And, and then you wait. I think I did something. Done without errors. Now, if you are interested, you can hop on to this place, 192.168.1.41, and see for yourselves. It's your interest. 192.168.1.41. Okay, 1.41. Gives me something. How much time will it take? I don't know anything. This is the way most of the applications nowadays are written because the power is this. You straight away put an infrastructure level elbow grade code in a matter of minutes. Now, it's not like this is running a single machine. I could very easily create a Docker swarm. A swarm is uh, you have one manager mode who manages all the workload and different machines that work as slaves. They attach to you and allege their allegiance. And what you do after that is, you just deploy work to them. If somebody of them dies, well, no matter. You can rebalance do whatever I have to. And uh, I'll talk about, after I end this, I'll talk about certain things that I did not mention, but obviously I cannot put everything in one talk. A, B, C, 1, 2, 3. Think test at triple ID dot AC dot in and ABC123. A little bit of more configuration could have very well gotten me to send you an email, but I didn't do that. So I have test here already made. See, will it come by? This is a full blown application, and you could do these experiments all along. Now, I, my latex demo for the class or I don't know what and a lot of people seem to be using it. That's why you showing these and these and these. See upstairs there is one more keys and it did combine. Looks like it did something. Okay. Let me just stop this. So I can do a control C and boom and uh, the things that I did not mention here. I did not talk about volumes which is yet another way of playing with Docker. It's not always you could buy down things, it's not always good. You could add, use other techniques, you could use volumes. I did not talk about, I wanted to talk about Docker Swap, I could not, I cannot. There are a bunch of other things that I can do. I just really scratched this up. Basically, did not have the time or the energy, and I'll be bored. If time I have, it will start bouncing off. Okay.
how okay then uh, obviously it's not done so let's see are we done i hope we should ask questions i know you can please if there are any questions i know i i congratulate you to bear with me and i'm supposed to do things like this cram way too much by the way did you get at least something out of it can you at least do a docker run now I don't care who you are saying. I really would be honored if you gave me feedback now, email, whenever. I want to improve this talk. I told you this is an amalgamation of three talks I have already done. So I wanted to do everything at once. Those three talks, what happens is in the first talk somebody comes, the second talk he doesn't turn down, so he doesn't understand it. What I did is I just put it in there. And if you want more, I always almost reply to everything. But problem is, you know, please RTFM first. If it's a question that you can find on Google, it's no point in mailing me and you know, by writing back to you, please go, let me Google that for you. It's not Google. I am not an expert. I have to read the fucking thing. <laughs> this is where your slides will be. And by the way, now I told you, I promised you earlier, I show you how do I do slides because this helps me a lot in getting things done quickly. I am in FC design. Achha, kaan? Talks, mein hoga, me? Kaan. Talks, me? Kaan. Docker, in. So, Golang is very cool. I am very, I don't know, one of the crazy promoters of Golang. What you do is you write stuff, just like plain text, there's a certain format to it. You write your slide ka naam, subtitle, your name, your some link. Then the star means it's a big this font, this ka head here. And inside this, just like markdown. Markdown like the exactly the same. And the best thing about this is you can basically run code over it, which I'll show you sometimes. Okay. Then you call somebody called as present, which I already have. I have a yeah. You call present with whatever guys who can access you. I don't want you to access, that's why I called it on 137.0. If I want everybody to access, I'll bind it on my IP address. So, so yeah, guys. Thank you for bearing with me. And it was fun. For that feedback part, Please do the honors, I'll get to go. Do I need to speed up, speed down? Is there anything that I should add here? If you understand?